Welcome to Embedded System Lecture Series. In this video, I'll be going to explain you classification of embedded system. So when we talk about classification of embedded system, in general, we can classify embedded system in two categories. First is based on performance and functional requirement and second is based on performance of the microcontroller. When we talk about embedded system based on performance and functional requirement, again that is further subdivided into four categories in which first one is real-time embedded system, second is standalone embedded system, third is network embedded system, and fourth is mobile embedded system. And when we talk about embedded system based on performance of microcontroller, then that is further subdivided into three categories. First is small scale embedded system, second is medium scale embedded system, and third is sophisticated embedded system. In this video, I'll be explaining all these embedded system in great detail. So let us see all those embedded system one by one. So first I'll explain you real time embedded system. See real time embedded system performs the task in well defined time intervals. So here in real time embedded system, we need to see timings, it is very essential, it is performing tasks in well-defined time interval. It provides quick response in critical situations. So real-time embedded system provides quick response in critical situation. It is used in defense sector, it is used in health care sector, also it is used in industrial applications. Real-time embedded system further can be divided into two parts. One is soft real-time embedded system and second is hard real-time embedded system. See in soft real-time embedded system, time deadline is not strictly followed. See soft real-time embedded system does not follow time deadline strictly. So even if time deadlines are not followed strictly, output can be accepted. For example, microwave own in that we can have soft real time embedded system where once you cook any item inside microwave own, it is not strictly like you will have to follow 5 minutes and 2 seconds, 5 minutes and 3 seconds. You can have 5, 6 seconds plus or minus while you are executing particular event. Right. So that is what a case of soft real-time embedded system. Now when we talk about hard real-time embedded system, in that time deadline is strictly followed. So here, if you don't follow time deadline strictly, then output may not be accepted in hard real-time embedded system. For example, traffic light controller. See, in traffic light controller, if you don't follow time deadline strictly, in that case, there is a possibility that there can be huge traffic on the road. Right. So, you can see here, I have shown traffic signal. Right. And in that, we will have to follow traffic with each and every second else there is a possibility of huge traffic or there can be a possibility of accidents right so this is what example of hard real-time embedded system now i'll explain you stand alone embedded system see it is less complex embedded system and it is independent to any system Standalone embedded system is not depending on any system. It is independent and it is less complex. 
it is working as by their own right there is no dependency it takes input in analog and digital form and it provides output let us see some examples so it will be giving you a bit more clear idea like doorbell calculator or mp3 player so see doorbell or calculator does not depend on any external system right mp3 player does not depend on any external system it just takes input in analog or digital form and it provides you output this that is less complex and it is independent so that is stand alone embedded system now let us see third category that is network embedded systems now in network embedded system it is embedded system which is connected to network so there will be a network and in that network different systems are connected with each other so communication is happening with different nodes right so we'll be observing it will be communicating with server or with individual node using network like see if i say there is a star network then at center there will be server and all the elements are communicating to the server or sometimes two nodes are communicating with each other that is possible so that is also referred as network embedded system communication may happen using lan wan or other protocols here it may be wired communication or it may be wireless communication in wireless communication we use antennas and in wired communication there are further classification in wired communication there can be coaxial cable communication there can be optical communication right so we are not going in that great detail but one should know in network we need to connect different systems with server or we can have different systems connected to each other for example atm machine so in atm machine all the machines are connected with server or there can be card swap machine or iot devices so all these examples are connected with server and server is having data of all the embedded system so there can be a transaction and there can be a history of all the transactions right so this is what example of network embedded system now let us see mobile embedded systems now see mobile embedded system that we have for small scale embedded system that one can say or one can say based on size we are saying that is what mobile where we can keep that device anywhere with wireless communication so it is easy to use because of it is mobile mobile means it can move anywhere without any constraint it uses less resources and it is having a wide range of mobility in terms of displacement for example mobile phone or a digital camera right so this embedded system that we can keep anywhere right and we can have its uh, usage with respect to any position there is no dependency right when we use mobile only thing that we need to take care of is we need to keep mobile in network area right while this camera doesn't even care about network we can use it anywhere without botheration of network so these are mobile embedded systems now let us see second category in which small scale embedded system that we are deal with to discuss see in small scale embedded system will be using 8 bit or 16 bit microcontroller and there will be very little hardware and software right so one can say small scale embedded system that is having a lower cost as we are using 8 bit or 16 bit microcontroller see it involves board level design so any student can even have this kind of embedded system in their projects 
where we operate that with battery and we can program that by having C language. So in programming tools, we use editor, assembler and cross assembler. All these things that we will discuss it later when we see a detail of embedded system. For example, digital watch or automatic door lock that is example of small scale embedded system. Now, let us see medium scale embedded system. So in medium scale embedded system, little upgraded version of microcontroller or DSP or RISC processor that we have, where we have 16 to 32 bit microcontroller used with medium scale embedded system. Here, hardware and software both are little bit complex compared to small scale embedded system where we perform bit complex tasks. Here, execution of the system is bit faster compared to small scale embedded system as we have upgraded version of microcontroller as with small scale embedded system we have seen 8 bit or 16 bit microcontroller is there while with medium scale embedded system 16 to 32 bit microcontroller is used. Here programming tools are C, C++, Java, RTOS, Simulator, Debugger, ID. Right. And some basic examples are like routers for networking, cameras and smartphones are there. See previously I have already told you smartphones that is what we were been using uh, for mobile embedded system that is also included in medium scale embedded system where by using smartphone we can have many task execution so that is covered in medium scale embedded system. Now last is sophisticated embedded system in that we will be using more than 32 bit microcontroller so here there can be a use of 64 bit microcontroller and that is what we are using it for complex task execution right so sophisticated embedded system that is even having higher complexity in terms of execution of tasks compared to medium scale embedded system here hardware and software complexity is very large it is used to perform very complex functions and in this programming tools are not readily available here that is based on which company is providing which services right so it is not like readily available tools are there here different companies are having different tools and they will be charging for those tools for example washing machine and security products so here these are very simple examples which is there with sophisticated embedded system right here I have shown one Samsung washing machine that is what one practical example of sophisticated embedded system. So this is all about this session I hope you have understood this thank you so much for watching this video.